now question number 11 consider two n by n matrices a and b such that a plus b is invertible define two matrices c equal to a into a plus b inverse into b and d is b into a plus b inverse a which of the following relations always hold true and you are given four options so first c equal to a into a plus b inverse b and d is b a plus v inverse a so first we'll find out inverse so c inverse is a a plus v inverse b whole inverse so here we'll get b inverse a plus b a inverse just multiply b inverse a into a inverse plus b inverse b a inverse so here we get a into a inverse is identity matrix and b into b inverse is also identity matrix which is 1 so b inverse plus a inverse now d inverse is b into a plus b inverse a whole inverse so we'll get a inverse a plus b into b inverse just multiply a inverse a into b inverse plus a inverse b into b inverse which will be b inverse plus a inverse so here we can see that c inverse is d inverse now if we multiply c d with both of uh, the side then c into c inverse d equal to c and d into d inverse so this will give identity matrix that means d equal to c so the correct option is correct option is a c equal to d now question number 12 the refractive index n of the entire environment around a double slit interference setup is changed from n equal to 1 to n equal to 2 which of the following statement is correct about the change in the interference pattern so these are the four options the fringe pattern disappears the central bright maximum turns dark that is becomes a minimum and fringe width of the pattern increases by a factor 2 and fringe width of the pattern decreases by a factor 2 so if this is a center bright fringe then we'll have a dark fringe so this is not fringe then another bright then another dark So fringe width is basically this width. So we know that fringe width beta is d divided by 2d lambda divided by n. So basically beta is proportional to 1 by n. And if the setup changes from n equal to 1 to n equal to 2, that means beta 1 is... 1 by 1 which is 1 and beta 2 is 1 divided by 2 so beta 2 divided by b1 is 1 by 2 so beta 2 is beta 1 divided by 2 so the fringe width of the pattern decreases by a factor 2 so the correct option is d this is question number 13 a cyclotron can accelerate deuteron to 16 MeV if the cyclotron is used to accelerate alpha particles. What will be their energy? Take the mass of deuteron to be twice the mass of proton and mass of alpha particles to be four times the mass of protons. And you are given four options. So energy E is Q square B square R square divided by 2M. Where Q is the charge, 
B is the magnetic field, R is the radius of the D and M is the ma uh, particle's mass. So here for alpha the energy is Q alpha square B square R square divided by 2 M alpha and for deuteron is Q D square B square R square divided by 2 M D and the energy of deuteron is 16 MeV that is given here and we have said the mass of deuteron is twice the mass of proton so mass of deuteron is 2 MP and mass of alpha is 4 MP and we know that charge of deuteron is E and charge of alpha is 2 E then E alpha divided by E D is Q alpha square B square R square divided by 2 M alpha into 2 M D divided by Q D square B square R square this will be cancelled out here 2 2 will be cancelled out so Q alpha square divided by Q D square and md divided by m alpha so q alpha is 2e square divided by e square md is 2mp and m alpha is 4mp so mp mp will be cancelled out this will be 2 and here this is 4e square into 2 so this will simply give 2 now e alpha is 2 into ed and ed is 16 mev so 2 into 16 equal to 32 mev so the answer is c now question number 14 Consider a hypothetical world in which electron has spin 3 by 2 instead of half. What will be the electronic configuration for an element with atomic number z equal to 5? And these are the four options. So spin is 3 by 2 instead of half and for z equal to 5. And we know that degeneracy is 2s plus 1 so 2 into 3 by 2 plus 1 which is 4 that means z equal to 5 so 1 should be 1 is 4 and the other should be 2s 1 then the total atomic number will be 5 so the answer is a now question number 15 Two objects of unit mass are thrown up vertically with a velocity of 1 meter per second at latitudes 45 degree north and 45 degree south respectively. The angular velocity of the rotation of earth is given to be 7.29 into 10 to the power minus 5 second inverse. In which direction will the objects deflect when they reach their highest point due to Coriolis force? Assume zero year resistance and you are given four options. Okay. So, Coriolis force is minus of 2m omega cross v where omega is the angular velocity and v is the velocity. So, we can write this 2m v cross omega. Now, this is earth this is equator at 0 degree now this is 45 degree in north and this is 45 degree in south direction so at that point we can write omega n is 
omega cos lambda lambda is latitude j cap plus omega sin lambda k cap and here we can write omega s is omega cos lambda j cap minus omega sin lambda k cap and the velocity of the objects are in the z direction so v is v k cap so now force in north we can write 2m v k cross omega n so 2m v k cap cross omega cos lambda j cap plus omega sin lambda k cap so k cross j is minus i so 2m omega v minus of i cap and force in south direction 2m v k cap into omega cos lambda j minus omega sin lambda k so this is 2m v omega this will also minus i cap that means that i cap so so for the i cap if we see that both of them are in the minus i cap direction that means uh, we can say that minus x direction which is which is in the west okay so this is east not south so the correct answer is to the west in both hemisphere